Well, Christopher Pappas has uh, seemed to have been on the scene for ages now. He's only 32 years old, uh, but the executive mayor of the Mgeni municipality in uh, KZN has had quite an interesting journey. We're going to catch up with him today on how things are going in that province for the premier candidate of the Democratic Alliance. Chris, I say a lot's happened. My goodness, uh, since we last spoke, the chief whip of the DA in your municipality was murdered. Before we go into more pleasant issues, have you had, had an update? Have the murderers been found? Yeah, so there's the, the official update from the police, and then there's what we know. Um, sorry, I mean, good afternoon, first of all. I haven't seen you in a, in a long time. Um so yeah, there's uh, as, as you know, the the DA is working with private investigators on this as well. Um, as a, one of uh, a donor came forward and said they would offer a million rand for information that would lead to an arrest. So that's allowed us to work with um, with Afri Forum, um, with their uh, investigative body, with Harry Null and his team, uh, and they've been working sort of uh, parallel to to what the police are doing, and that is to keep constant pressure on on the case. What we saw at the end of last week, yes, about Friday, Thursday, Friday last week, was a wanted notice put out by the police. Uh, and that's sort of a big break, uh, sort of a big breakthrough. It's, it's put a face to, to some of the, the crime in, in the area. And one of the crimes that uh, is, is linked is this particular murder. So we are hopeful that there, that progress is being made. Uh, we don't think that progress would have been made if it wasn't for uh, this team working in the background who's highly professional and very skilled. Um, but yeah, we, we are still hopeful for justice. Uh, and it's not just this particular case that uh, is linked to, to, to sort of criminal activity, but there's a number of crimes around that area, uh, that all seem to lead back to the, to the same person, same place. And Clara Jens and Lovu, um, was he in any way politically involved? In other words, we've, we've known that in case it in particular, political assassinations um, happen quite often. Was there anything to do with politics in his murder? So, so yes and no. I mean, he lived, he exists and works within a political space and uh, the motivation for the murder itself is believed to be linked to the uh, our ongoing program as a municipality to, to reduce sort of organised uh, crime around uh, electricity theft and uh, other municipal infrastructure related issues. Uh, but within this mixture, um, you know, that's where the politics comes in. ANC councillors instigating, uh, bringing, sort of spreading misinformation. Uh, the, the person who we think uh, ordered the crime is also uh, very politically involved. Uh, his superior is also very politically involved. So it, it's not necessarily DA versus ANC or IFP or whatever that, you know, that sort of a situation. Um, but it, it really does involve uh, po politicians um, as uh, as a whole. It's very dangerous occupation to be in the political sphere in South Africa, but also at the moment very turbulent, particularly in your province. Uh, we've seen the emergence of Jacob Zuma uh, into the fray, the MK party getting a lot of support according to the pollsters. We have a piece on Biz News today where R.W. Johnson has tracked back a um, organization, a media organization that's supporting MK being funded by the Kremlin. So it's big stuff that's going on there. Perhaps you can give us some insight from your perspective on exactly how this is all playing out, given that you are the premier candidate for your party in the province. Yeah, so it's a very, very interesting times in politics in, in KZN. Uh, I think it's, it's always been an interesting province. Um, I usually call it a bit of a, it's a bit of an outlier. Um, you know, a lot of the, the English media attention is usually driven by, by Gauteng and, and the Western Cape. And we have in case then this different phenomenon where the majority language here is is Zulu, uh, so there's a whole different sort of um, you know narrative, a whole different discussion that takes place here in case then that often misses uh, the the English and Afrikaans media that that happens at a at a national level, uh, which does get which 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 is interesting when you're on the ground. So again, polls are a, a glimpse in time, and different people have different opinions on them. But I think what has emerged. Uh, is that the MK has gained a lot of traction in this province. And you can actually see it on the ground. 
Um, you, you see their motorcades, you see their banners, you see their T-shirts in places where you, you wouldn't expect them. And it's all over the province. It's not just sort of in the urban areas or in the big big centers. Um, the, the ANC is not as visible as, as it usually is um, on, on the ground. Their, their big sort of door-to-door campaigns are, are much smaller than they usually are. Um, I mean, they, they, we've still got a couple of weeks before the election and, they, and they're good at pushing out numbers two or three weeks before that. But really not as much campaigning that we've seen from them. The IFP, a huge focus in the north um, of, of the province, sort of, uh, you know, beyond uh, beyond Belito upwards um, and into the, the, you know, traditional Zululand area. Um, and the, the DA gaining traction in, in, in a lot of different communities. So, you know, our, our traditional sort of support base uh, has remained strong here. Um, and this this new appetite um, within sort of peri-urban and rural areas, which we've seen, which is which is very interesting and very um, it's very hopeful for for our growth. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's such an interesting time in in KZN. Every you know every time you think things are stabilizing, something you know profound in our in our sense happens. Whether it's snatching of a mic or uh, the Zulu King issuing a statement or a by someone losing a by election. So there's always these things that are thrown in to keep a, a political conversation going. Yeah. And as far as you're concerned, being fluent as you are in Isi Zulu, does that give you an insight perhaps that uh, people who don't have that connection or that understanding would not have? I think, yes, it does. I mean, you know, as I said, we, we have the majority of the population in this province is Isi Zulu speaking. So whether it's engaging with Isi Zulu media, whether it's engaging with Isi Zulu influencers or, or just, uh, you know, sort of uh, people who drive popular culture, uh, whether it is just being uh, with, with uh, communities, uh, you're able to gather a sense of what the political uh, the political landscape is, and I think more so than before here in in sort of maybe 2014 and, and again 2019, is that this the there's a better understanding um, by by everyone in case in a, about the, the power of the vote. There's the, the this loyalty that was given to the ANC sort of back in 2004 and beyond. It has waned. Uh, people have changed their votes in different municipalities. People have, um, we, I mean, we've seen a lot of municipalities shift hands. Uh, we've seen different political parties arise, the ABC, the MK, and a number, number of other parties, NFP. So KZN, uh, more than a lot of provinces, people change their vote um, when the message is compelling enough for people to do so. And I think the ability to engage with that segment of the population really does help. But that's very, very constructive, Chris. If you think about a democracy where people are no longer blindly following a party because it is uh, the favorite football team, but in fact, because they know what the party can do for them. And I guess there, there might be more maturity amongst the population than many people, or particularly many pollsters, are giving it credit for. Yeah, with, without you know, shooting down political analysts, I mean, you know, they've, they've got a role to play in our political discourse. Um, but I think a lot of the time when you're actually on the ground, when you're, when you're speaking to people when you're in communities, when you have to deal with complaints, um, when you're in people's homes, um, you, you get a very different understanding of what the average South African is feeling like. And in, South, and in cases, in that's obviously a, a bit different. And I think there's a number of different things. I mean, the, 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 this, 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 this idea that democracy can change your future. You know, in other words, your, your vote has an impact on your, your life circumstances. I think people are, are, are realizing that more and more. Um, I think the, the narratives around race are, 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 are weaker in, in this election. You know, the apartheid's going to come back and uh, all of this sort of propaganda that's usually usually put out. Um, and so, so, so there's, there's a different feeling and a different conversation that's happening um, to, to what usually happens on uh, to, during elections, um, it is. It also. I mean, there's there's a gap as well. Um, a, a lot of what is happening in KZN is is personality driven. Um, there, there's relatively little conversation about plans. Uh, you know, you, you you usually vote for a political party because there's some sort of track record or they would plan to fix something. But there's a lot of there's a lot of personality. Um, d- politics that's taking place in in KZN, um, and and figures that that most most people in the national stage don't know about, whether it is PG Mavunda or I mean everyone knows Jacob Zuma, but um, we have our, our local uh, our local characters who, who carry some sort of command or, or influence over um, over over political discussions, uh, and and those are always interesting to to participate in. That all lends to a changing political landscape. What about the Zulu King? 
does he have great influence and indeed does he um, endorse any party or any candidate? So no, he's, he's made his um, his position clear uh, and many of his uh, Amma Paul saying isn't doing it, doing it do the same. They will, will say, listen, we, we, we allow free campaigning, we, we, we don't take any size. But I think what we have seen um, is I think he, he got off to a bit of a rocky start in the beginning, like like you would expect any new leader um, who, who's taking over something so big with such a big history uh, and, and possibly had some of the, the wrong people around him at the time, whether it was a spokesperson or, or others. Um, and I think he's really found uh, himself now uh, as, as a leader. He's got good people around him, or these people who are giving him better advice, uh, and he's able to be more uh, authoritative in... in um, in sort of putting down the views of the the Zulu royal household, uh, as opposed to having to pander to political parties um, as as they flop and change their decisions and, and try to appeal to him for more political um, political acknowledgement, I guess, uh, which is great. Uh, I think I, th- I think that it shows it, it shows that he's finding uh, himself uh, in his his new role. Um, and that it is also redefining the Zulu monarchy in in this province, which for for a while has been beholden or seemingly beholden to the provincial government, who's a large funder of the uh, you know of the activities of the household. But yes, I think in terms of his um, his influence o- over what people think and say and what what the the uh, sort of popular topics are when he does engage, when he does when he does voice his uh, concerns about things. Uh, people do do stop and listen uh, in case of it. At the Biz News Conference, R.W. Johnson let slip uh, ahead of ENCA's poll, which he's looking after, uh, that the ANC was down to 13%, 13% in KZN. Uh, that is something that has been reinforced elsewhere as well. And he said that if you didn't know better, you would think that this was the province that was about to secede. Rather, forget about Cape Independence. It KZ in with only 13% to the national government. Uh, it, it appears as though um, there's a very different view that happens in the province. Now, when you look at that from the, the way forward and the breakdown of the different parties, where it, it seems like it's going to be quite difficult for any coalition to get, or any obvious coalition to get control, are you seeing that being a stress in the future or, or being at least uh, a demand for greater devolution of power for that province? I, th- I think yes and no. I think there's a lot of political sort of – there's a lot of political agreement across all, all parties um, in, in case then. Um, I mean, we are a, a big province so that has a, a lot of national influence. So there is a lot of agreement across different political parties for a call for devolution of, of different powers. Um you know, the Gauteng ANC has called for a devolution of policing powers not so long ago. Uh, that's a thing. That's something that the DA is obviously pushing hard for in both the Western Cape and as part of my pledges to the voters here. Um, and there's a, there's a number of, of um, different things that we're asking for. Uh, local government, uh, I know that the ANC here is calling for greater devolution to, to, to local government. Uh, the IFP wants more power. I mean, they're a federal party as well. So yes, I think there is a, a, a broad consensus amongst political parties in KZN that that provinces uh, need more need more power. Uh, obviously, that needs to be done uh, in, in a way that doesn't undermine national government. It needs to be done in a way that that keeps the unified state, and it needs to be done in a way that doesn't support uh, incompetence. You don't want to devolve power to an in- incompetent government. In other words, a government that is not capable of, of delivering. So while the notion might be the same, uh, the practicalities of devolving those uh, different powers are, are different. Um, but I do think that that there is a sense of, of unity amongst um, amongst KZN in, in voters, um, that, that you know, KZN is a different province. We have our, our, our own history. Uh, we have our own problems to deal with. We have our own... Uh, unique traditional structures of leadership that we have to deal with. Um, we have obviously the the Ingonyama Trust. We have the IFP and the ANC history. So there is definitely a, a unique identity um, that the people of KZN feel and see for themselves across across different um, racial backgrounds, religious backgrounds. There really is a sense of being um, in in KZN. Um, but yeah, the polls are interesting. A glimpse in time. They've got margins of error. Uh, how you calculate them all differs, but I think what we what we're seeing um, is exactly what you're saying is that an almost complete collapse of the ANC in in this province, um, which is the ANC stronghold really. It's their birth place. It's their stronghold, and and it is 
I would be worried if I were them. Uh, I don't think they're going to end up as bad as as people. Some of the, the worst polls have them at. It's still a very big organization with a long history of deep structures. But the MK in particular has done some serious, serious damage to the ANC in this province. And what about you personally? Because you are the provincial premier candidate. So how does that all work? Could you just explain that to us? So I'm number one on the, the case of the invest, uh, which means that um, the first seat that is allocated towards the DA in the provincial legislature is is mine. Um, and that is, that's party policy. Um, usually the, the premier candidate ends up number one on the list, so does the, the party's presidential uh, candidate. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's going to be interesting to see where the results end. You know, will I be premier in a, a DA outright majority? Uh, will I be a premier in a coalition? Uh, will I be an MEC in, in a government where we are a minority partner? Uh, or or we, will we have to go to the opposition benches to keep doing the good work there? Um, so that's what we're pushing for for the 29th. So it does mean that you're going to be leaving your position as the executive mayor of Mgeni. Well, yes. Yeah, so if, t- if I take up a position in the, in the legislature, um, whether it is in opposition or in government, uh, it would mean that I'd have to step down as, as mayor. You don't feel that the, the, the job isn't quite done? I was looking at Good Governance Africa and you've surged up the, uh, the charts, but still 55 in the country. I'm sure you would have liked to have been number one in the country before you handed over the reins. Do you, do you have someone competent to give it to? Is, are you comfortable that, that you've done as much as you can? No, I mean, the, job, the job's not done. Um, there's still a lot, a lot more to do. We, it's, yeah, there's, a, there's lots of issues that we have to sort, resolve with, with finance and with infrastructure backlogs, um, and those, those have to be solved. So the work is it, isn't done. Um, but to have a sympathetic, uh, competent, working provincial government, if, if I get the opportunity to do that, to bring what I've learned, especially around local government where the bread and butter of service delivery is, um, then I think that not only helps the, the DA and people of Vienna, but it also helps other small municipalities um, across KZN who, who, who feel you know, the, the provincial government in this province, um, if you're not ANC, an ANC-run municipality, you, you get constant love letters, you're getting, you know, constantly scrutinized, you never get assistance or very seldom get assistance. And to have a, a government that looks beyond just political lines to, to make local government work, to make our small towns and cities work, so I think will be helpful for KZN in, in, in general. But yes, I've, I, I, I'm not alone. I work with a great team um, of, of very competent councillors that, you know, stretch from rural to urban, from old to young, uh, Women, men, learned people, experience, you know, sort of life experience people. So it's, it really is a capable team. And my deputy mayor has, um, over the years, over the last sort of 28 months, um, found himself uh, in having a lot more responsibility, uh, especially now in the last sort of five or six months with campaigning. Um, and we've also built a good uh, staff team. There's a good staff component in the municipality. We've got rid of nine senior managers we filled a lot of i think we've, we've hired 42 staff members many of those with very specialized qualifications around engineering or uh, legal or whatever it might be uh, and that is starting to see the municipality move in a way where where us as those who do political oversight don't have to be involved in, in you know sort of nitty gritty day-to-day stuff but things are starting to flow more easily so you got the template there it is almost like the da has got the template of the western cape for the rest of the country What's your campaign in, in KZN? How are you positioning yourself as the um, premier candidate that will attract voters to your party? So, so there's a few things. I, I think the first thing is is that I, I'm working in a space with much older people. Uh, and there's a large segment of the population in, in KZN who sort of feels left behind. That the, the people who have been in charge for a long time, I think what John, John uses is the expression, the same people at the same table making the same decisions. Um, you have been there a very long time and people are looking for, for something new. Um, but something something not not just new, but something that is that has been tested. And I think that's the first thing. So I'm, I'm young, but not too young, not too old. The tested part is, well, I'm in government. I'm running a municipality. I'm trying to fix something that is, is broken and there are visible signs of it getting better. Um, the other thing is then, I mean, sort of the DA is an institution. Um, we're the only other political party that runs a province in, in this country. So in terms of like for like, you can compare our ANC-run um, KZN to the DA-run Western Cape. And of course, there's still problems in the Western Cape and they have their challenges to solve. Um, but on a, on a comparative basis, there are things that are happening there that are not happening here. So you can make that comparison um, to two people. 
at the end of the day is that we've actually got a credible a credible plan, a credible message. You know, what is the, what are our solutions to water? Well, we 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 got through day zero and we've learned lessons there. What are our um, solutions to crime? Well, we're implementing them in a different part of the country and in the municipality. In infrastructure, all all the rest of the things that are problems uh, as a province. So I think that's the main message: is that we we are we are tried and tested. Uh, we have a candidate who who is uh, young, dynamic, uh, can actually go out there and engage across different communities, uh, whether it's rural, or urban. Uh, black or white, whatever it might be, um, and that we we are a party that is that is even in this province tested our own policies to try and turn uh, turn things around. So a message of hope rather than fear. Absolutely, um, our, our, we we really do straight, try to stay away from uh, engaging in 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 other political party bashing. We we try and our, our, most if you go into to my campaign, if you go onto the, the any of the provincial platforms, we're saying you know it, it is it is about hope. Um, for, for the very first time, we have an opportunity to change government um, in in this this province. Um, you know, so we had had what we had after democracy. We've had the same thing for a very long time now. Now we're once again given that opportunity. So it's it's about hope and winning. I think everyone likes to be part of a winning team, and and in case then we we have an opportunity for people to be part of a a winning team, whether it's winning against uh, unemployment or winning against uh, infrastructure backlogs or winning the election. We have a credible path uh, to, to, to change the circumstances of what we have. We have great communities here in Kesden. Just doesn't Margate yesterday, communities, businesses come out to fix their roads and the beaches that have washed away. And it happens everywhere. We just really have great people, great communities who look after each other. Um, and people want to harness that to, to, to rebuild our province. Now, Helen Zilla and John Stianazen, have been asked many times about the uh, coalition partners in the future. But let's look at it on a provincial level. Would the DA in KZN make its own decisions or would it have to come from the federal council? For instance, if you, the IFP and the ANC had enough votes to get above 51%, theoretically, just hypothetically, is that something that you as the premier candidate would make a decision on? And would you go into coalition with those partners? Or would it have to come from somebody else? So, so how we work is that we try and remove people from the decision-making process who have a vested interest. In other words, you know, I, I really want to be premier. So if someone comes to say to me, can I make a, a government work with whoever it might be, I'm going to tell you, yes, it might be really difficult and I might not be able to see through some of the, the fog. So what we do is that we have provincial actors, uh, whether it is the provincial leader or the provincial chairperson, whoever it might be, who are involved in the negotiations, but those people form part of a much broader national team as well. At the end of the day, we are a party that has a national footprint, uh, and what we don't want to do is have decisions made at a provincial level, even at a local level, uh, that compromise the, the values of the organization, the, the long-term strategic views of the organization, our, our promises to voters, uh, our promises to partners, like in the, in the uh, multi-party charter. So yes, it's a bit of a mixture, but I don't get involved directly. My opinion is is solicited. My inputs are, are involved in there. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a national and provincial function to go and put that together, considering all the other discussions that happen around um, other provinces and and um, our, our pledges to voters. Uh, I think we've made it we've made it absolutely clear that the the ANC is not a partner that we can we can work with at the moment. It is a it is it is. Why would we work so hard to remove someone from government, um, only to then, you know, go back into government with him? IFP is a bit different. We 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 are actively trying to work with IFP. We have been even before the multi-party charter, charter, uh, with with two main objectives. One is to remove the the ANC from government, but the other is then to actually make um, sort of multi-party politics work. We started with the service delivery agreement here in this province before the multi-party charter. And that was how do you take organizations with independent um, identities and independent voter bases that are trying to grow themselves, uh, but at the same time, not compromise on each other's ability to hold each other accountable, um, but then also to do so constructively. Where there are problems, let's try to fix them uh, before we, we engage in the sort of politics that we've seen over the last uh, 30, 30 years. Christopher Pappas is the premier candidate for the Democratic Alliance for KwaZulu-Natal, and I'm Alec Hogg from business.com.